This airline's premium economy is ranked 9th in the world, but I think they are much better than that. Today I'm flying Cathay Pacific for the first time in 5 years. This video is a series of two flights from Melbourne to Hong Kong and Hong Kong to Bangalore. So join me as we buckle up and explore every facet of Cathay Pacific's premium economy offering so you can find out if it's worth the upgrade. Before we dive into today's video, we are thrilled to announce that our channel has just hit 1,500 subscribers. Yeah! Stick around for an exciting giveaway later on in the video. Cathay Pacific operates three flights a day from Melbourne to Hong Kong. Today, I'm on the 8.50 a.m. departure. Clearly got here way too early for this flight. Check-in only opens three hours before. Luckily, the wait wasn't too long and check-in was soon open. Premium Economy Ticket gets its own check-in line separate to business and first class which makes this process very swift. Cathay uses piece limits for baggage and Premium Economy gets two pieces at 23 kgs. I personally prefer the rate system used by other airlines. Alright, here we go! Typically, Premium Economy Ticket doesn't come with launch access. I was personally able to access the Qantas first launch through my One World status. This launch deserves its own video, and to keep this video focused on the Cathay experience, I'll skip this part. Cathay also gives you the option to use the house launch if eligible. Now I'm gonna head to the gate where my flight's almost ready to board. Today's flight is from gate 20, which is a long walk away from the flight. Hello again. Cathay's morning flight is operated by the 777-300ER. There are 38 such aircraft in Cathay's fleet, and today's aircraft is a 3-class config with 368 seats. Premium economy as usual sits in the middle between business and economy, and consists of 32 seats in a 242 layout. Hi! Hi! Hey, that way. Thank you! Immediately upon boarding, I'm hit by the green theme of Cathay's cloth-covered seats. The seats are definitely not new, but quite comfortable and spacious, at least on a 777. There is a very decent full recline and the foot and leg rest complement this setup very well. These adjustments can be made using the controls on the armrest. The items provided in the seat were a pillow, a menu card, water bottle, amenity kit and blanket. It seemed like it was my lucky day as the cabin was fairly empty on this flight. Looks like I'm not the for myself. Continuing with the seat features, on the left armrest there is a small tray table with an even smaller pop-out tray. Below this there is a headphone port and the TV remote which controls this 12-inch display. More on the entertainment screen in a moment, but it's great to see that it provides an in-flight camera. On either side of the TV, we have a cord hook and a USB charging port. Below the TV, there is a little storage area and finally further below is a seat pocket where you can find these noise cancelling headphones. It did took me a while to find this, but the seat also provides AC power. Prior to the departure of the flight, there was a hot towel service along with a drink offering. The flight was soon pushed back and the previously mentioned in-flight camera provided us with some great viewing angles. There was a slight delay as we waited at the end of the taxiway for a few planes to land. And soon we were off on our way, hurtling down the runway to Asia's World City.
The flight time for today was 8 hours and 45 minutes. After takeoff, I took a brief look at the amenity kit, which contained all the basics that you would need for a flight like this. And here is your chance to win one of these. Simply like the video and comment which other airline we should try next for your chance to win one of these cute little amenity kits. Alright, it's now time to pull out the tray table and check out the menu card in anticipation of the breakfast service. So it seems like there are two meal services on this flight. So these are breakfast service, yeah, there's two options. And then there's a lunch service which has three options. And then there is also the drinks menu which is mostly uh, wine and some spirit as well. Alright, I've just been so breakfast on this flight and it looks pretty impressive. So here I have the main course which is the noodle, so along with some fruits, yogurt, uh, piece of bread. Accompanied by the cutlery kit, which was all metal with minimalistic Cathay branding. I went for the Asian breakfast option of the prawn noodle. The meal was fresh, full of flavor and it was well enjoyed. After the meal service, the curtains were deployed, separating these four rows of seats from the other cabins, giving it a very private feel. I had a quick look through the entertainment system and it was quite responsive, both via the touchscreen and via the remote. I still don't know why they have these credit card readers on these airplane remotes. Maybe someone else can let me know. The content provided was also quite diverse. In terms of the toilet, premium economy shares these with economy class and they were quite standard. As a little hack, these toilets located at the rear of the 777 are quite long and spacious and not many people seem to go here. Four and a half hours into the flight, as we crossed the continent of Australia, the lunch service began already. I was quite surprised that this service started so early. This time, some almonds were provided. It seems like airlines tend to use almonds over peanuts on Australian flights. For the mains, there were four options provided, and I went for the butter chicken option, which was served on a tray with all the usual items. It was once again very delicious and highlighted the quality of Cathay's premium economy catering. You know, sometimes the quality of a meal is determined by the ice cream that's served, and I think in this case, it's pretty good. Cathay serves Ben and Jerry's on flights out of Australia. A fitting treat to end this lunch service. The crew came through quite regularly after this meal service, offering drinks and snacks. The rest of the flight was uneventful and we were soon on our descent into Hong Kong. I like how Cathay provides arrival gate information and connecting gates information. This along with the terminal map provides some relief for those with shorter transits. So that's the end of this first flight from Melbourne to Hong Kong. Uh, to be honest, it was a pretty good flight. I was uh, quite impressed by the sea and the food was pretty good. The service was maybe a bit like very formal, but it's still alright, it's pretty good. So now I've got the six hours here before my next flight to Bangalore. Thank you. Thank you.
Built on an artificial island, Hong Kong International Airport is one of the busiest hub airports in the world. First things first, as a transit passenger, one needs to get to the transfer desk and pass security. Alright, finally passed the uh, immigration and uh, security. This airport is quite spread out. In fact, Strava says that the distance between gate 70 at one end and gate 4 at the other end is about 1.5 kilometers. This means there's quite a lot of walking involved. The airport is home to several amazing launches of Cathay Pacific, but once again, it's best I keep that to another video. The airport itself is to an amazing international standard with its distinct roof pattern. There are plenty of shops around and viewpoints to keep yourself busy for a few hours. Being able to see the airplanes directly under your foot at such a close distance is such a unique experience. So definitely check it out if you are considering why this airport. Anyway, it's time to head all the way across the terminal to gate 3 for my connecting flight to Bangalore. I'm really excited for my flight today because it's my first 8350 flight in over a year. And if you guys didn't know, I'm a big fan of the 8350. So I'm really, really excited to be back on it. Cathay's A350-900 features 28 seats in premium economy, once again in the 242 layout. Thank you. Seat number, sir? Uh, 38. 38, yes, it's yeah, this, this right one. This one. Yeah. Awesome, yeah. thank you. The cabin feels a lot newer than the 777 as the aircraft itself is only a few years old. Once again, the seats were in the distinct green color, but this time there was a reading light next to the headrest. The seat controls were a bit more fancier than on the 777, and so was the mini drinks table. The amenities provided were the same as the last flight, except for the menu card which wasn't supplied. The bulkhead seat is definitely far superior in terms of legroom. However, one of the downsides is that the entertainment system is on the wall, so everyone can see what you're watching. We were shortly pushed back and sent on our way to Bangalore. The A350s come with an additional tail camera for another perspective of the action. The meal service began shortly after takeoff. The tray table comes out via this spring loaded mechanism and it was quite large. We were provided with two choices verbally and I went for this chicken and rice which was a bit cheesy. Here's a quick look at the toilet which is once again shared with economy class. In the A350s all the toilets are in the middle section and almost the same as each other. Since this was a late flight and I was already 15 hours into my day, I slept most of it and woke up only when Bangalore came into sight. To wrap up, Cathay Pacific Premium Economy is definitely a step up over its economy. The seats offer great comfort and provide a generous recline. The in-flight entertainment system is reasonable and additional perks like priority check-in and boarding make it all worthwhile. I just wish that their baggage allowance was weight-based and the catering more consistent. Cathay is currently ranked number 9 on the premium economy chart, but I think they are punching well above their weight in this section. After spending almost 24 hours in an aeroplane, I finally reached India. Overall, it was a very nice experience flying Cathay Pacific. Obviously, the time takes a lot longer than flying West Singapore or Malaysia, but it's still a really good option. Thank you so much for watching this video. 
Hope you enjoyed it and got an insight into flying Cathay Pacific. We look forward to taking you on another travel adventure very soon.